Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. There's something else that's going on with this as well. And when people have more bone morphogenic protein and higher bone density, they better regulate their blood sugar. So you get less diabetes when you have more bone density. Can you walk me through whatever we know about that, or at least whatever you know about that? Yeah. Yeah. The more bone density you have, the more muscular tissue you have that's active, that's participating in uh, GLUT4 signaling. So pulling in, um, you know, insulin and glucose and using it correctly. So we, we have a clinical trial on bone density and we have a clinical trial on type 2 diabetics showing tremendous outcomes, but also the outcomes are stackable. So somebody takes, uh, you know, um, metformin. And it's the diabetes anti-aging drug, right? right? Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, it's very low side effect, very, very high benefit if you have a, a, a lousy hemoglobin A1C score. Uh, and then, and then it, it assists you uh, uh, because it's really doing something curative to the muscular tissue. It's, it's looking at GLUT4 signaling. It's, it's increasing the level of GLUT4 signaling. So the activity in muscle, not so much hypertrophy, but uh, just the efficiency of having it be active and functioning and using these, uh, using its receptors for glucose and insulin, which, you know, for somebody who, who's got metabolic syndrome, they're not using those things. Yep. It, it does appear to make a really big difference. Even if your bone, if your bone density is higher, mm. um, even if you don't add a bunch of muscle, you just have better bones mm -hmm. and ligaments. There seems to be some correlation there. Um, well, this this would be theoretical. Yeah. Uh, because there's just no there's just no study that's that's going to look at similar populations, one with low bone density, one with higher bone no. density, because they're not going to be similar. They're, that's they're not, not. going to be the only incongruency you, between the two populations, yeah. so you can't study it. But what I would say is, somebody who has a stronger chassis has stronger bone mass. Are they going to be able to build more muscle? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, like from an engineering perspective, there's limitations within the body governed by neural inhibition. So the more force you put through bone mass, the more likely you are to be triggering at some point the muscles to shut off. Sort of like you can't break your own finger by squeezing a fist, no matter how hard you try. You yep. have a neural inhibitory process that is stopping you. But uh, the more, the stronger you get, the more force you can create. So if I've mm -hmm. got some sort of force measurement device in my hand, I can, that force can continue to go up and up and up. And that limitation is still there, but it's at a different place every time. 